Welcome to Sanks to Sank TV, brought to you courtesy of First Ave Entertainment. I am your host, B. If you want more information about Sanks to Sank TV, please feel free to log on to www.sanks2sanktv.com. We're also on Instagram at Sanks to Sank TV. Now, I got to give Karu a full lot of there a shout out because they've been sick and staying, rocking and rolling with us for quite some time now. You guys, check out Karu for a lot of at Karu Multiplex. We got an awesome show lined up for you this evening. Stick and stay. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sanks for Sank TV. I'm your host, B, and we are here with Lee Kelly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. He yes. is a musician, all around awesome musician, but the genre that you stick to the most is? I try to stay the reggae. Reggae, reggae. And the thing about reggae that I love the most is that it not only, I mean, makes you feel good, but the social consciousness behind it, the the awareness, you know, I love that about reggae music. I know there's different parts and entities of reggae, and you guys have definitely branched off with a bunch of different um, entities of reggae, but I love that to the core. I love that part of reggae. So let's talk about you. All right. You've been in the business for how long now? Wow, I started out this business at a very young age. Okay. I've pretty much been doing over 30 years now. Whoa. But I took a break. Okay. Took a little hiatus. For we a need minute. that. We yeah, need that sometimes. You know, gather your mind, right? Yep, yep. Then afterwards, I just went full speed ahead. So what make you continue to, you know, delve back into the music? To be honest with you, it's, it's the love for the people mm. that they give me when I'm up there on stage. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a feeling that I can never get enough of it. Ah. So it makes me want to come back more and ah. more and more. So the reciprocity you give, the take, take and it's continuous. All the time. That whole flow of things. That's yeah. pretty dope. So what what is it that makes you tick with music? Because, I mean, there could be so many different genres that you could have, you know, said, okay, I'm going to pick classical. I'm going to pick, like, you can't look at a person and say, ah, this person is regular. You'll be surprised how many people will shock you, right? You can't look exactly. at outer shells and say, this person will do great in hip hop, rap, or reggae. But why reggae for you? Uh, I stayed old school because of the genre that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much classical, yeah. R&B, ah. dance music. So only on a Sunday, we'd really get a break. Ah. Play some reggae because my mom's a musician, my dad's a musician, so ah. that's where everything started from. Nice. So I pretty much had it in my bones, but just didn't pay it no mind. Mm. But as soon as we start getting that reciprocity, as you said, mm -hmm. you know, and start to keep going, I'm like, yo, I'm loving this. Right, right. I'm not putting it down. Love it, love it. Yep. So in music, there's a lot of areas that you can utilize as far as your platform is concerned, right? What is essentially your platform? Because Oftentimes, you know, everyone is not here to have that specific story. They, they, some people, they're here, you know, to, you know, keep the generation going as far as being fruitful, right? We have some people, <laughs> yes. you know, their, their niches, okay, you know, the whole, you know, hip hop as far as love ballads. You have some people, ah, they're in that part where they're breaking up with their husband mm -hmm. or their significant other, so they, shout that so what's your platform what is it that you well, my platform I try to stick 
pretty much to the island stuff. Ah, like okay. old school rules, okay. old school genre, old school talk, old school everything. And what's the so example of an old my school? My example talk? of old school is how a man and a woman relates. Ah, whew. I didn't even want to dig into okay. this that right now. <laughs> Because boy, so, boy, island men, boy, I tell you. So how is it that men and women relate um, in your, from your perspective? From my perspective, I think we could do better. Ah. So this is the reason why I go out on this limb and say, you know, I want to be like the next Barry Salmon, the mm. next Freddie McGregor, you know? Yeah. I want to feel that shoe. I want to be the next Alton Ellis. Love it, love know? it. Because the older they get, and they stop writing, who's gonna fill the shoe? Exactly. Now, I'm not saying that there are not some young cats out there who's coming up. Right, right. I agree. Right. But for some of us who has been in the business for a while, probably didn't get that full limelight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now it's the time to step your game up. Nice. The only way you could prove that, stick to the genre. Love it. See? You can't miss. They pick on me all the time with my sticking and staying. Oh, I'm sticking and I'm staying. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> So, okay, so you're sticking in this genre because you feel that there's a need for us to go ahead and cultivate that, right? Yes. So, hmm, I don't even want to touch it real quick, but I got to go there. I need you to, to enlighten me on this whole relationship status thing that we have going on in the islands. I can't even say, I can't even say in one specific island, but in the Caribbean, all, all of the islands, yep. there's this thing where women have the notion of being that nurturer, mm -hmm. which we are, we're yes, naturally, naturally nurturers, naturally, but with the man. Like, why isn't it that the man comes ready for the woman? Okay, the reason for Ooh, that. He's ready already. Oh, yeah, I'm way up on this. <laughs> the reason for that, it has to do with your background. Ah. Uh -huh. And most homes in the Caribbean are broken homes. Ooh. So, hence, the men are not as powerful like we should be, mm -hmm. so the women fall into that slot. Oh, God bless So us. other than just being the natural nurturer, right, right. now she has to be the head count. Yeah. She has to be the boss. Mm -hmm. She has to make sure everything is fine. So what do we do as men to show our women that, look, we put you on a pedestal for mm -hmm. having our back when we was gazing. Yes. So now it's our time to get back to you. See? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Easily. Make a beautiful song about a man and a woman and him professing his love for it. And I'm pretty sure you're going to share that with us when oh, we come definitely. back. Thanks to Sank TV. We'll be back. Stick and stay. <laughs>
to match that gap or bridge that gap? Exactly. Ah. We need to bridge that gap because we can't afford to lose our women. We can't. They're much too strong, much too beautiful. We got to stay them put. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Express your love to the woman. Mm. Don't just send her roses all the time. Mm. Do little simple stuff that you never normally do. It's the simple things, guys. You best believe it. Mm -hmm. Most women, they, need, they just need time. Ah. Most guys, we're too oh busy working. Oh, my God. Time out, time out. See? Time. Hit the it nail on so the head. true. Told you I'm sticking it's this It's time. <laughs> it is time. And it's so crazy because men are programmed to work. They're programmed it's, to it's, get out it's, and it's work. It's our deal work. because mm -hmm. we know that a woman regards her surroundings on security. Right. So we as the men, we say, okay, we're going to work our butt off. We're right. going to make this money. We're going right. to take care of the family. But all work and no play makes Jack <sighs> a dull boy. Ooh, so Jack you gotta, a dull boy. you got to spice it up. Uh, I'm going to leave Jack alone because I was going to say Jack a dull boy, but I'm going to leave it alone because okay. I know that's a double <laughs> entendre in itself. All right, yeah. all right. So how do you spice it up? Let well, me hear some... What I did mm -hmm. was to look back at what we had back in the old days, like the 50s and the 60s. Wow. What was it that kept our folks together? Yeah. What did they do? Mm. How did they do it? Right. So I figured out a few stuff. Okay. And I said, let me try and bring it to this genre and see if they're going to bite. Oh, they, they did not only bite. Ah. They're tearing it up. Nice. Now, I can't even come fast enough. Nice. You know what I'm saying? He can't come. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, the more I try to get tracks out there, uh -huh. it's like somebody's like, oh, I love this one. When are you going to give me another one? Right, I'm right. like, but this one is not seasoned yet. Oh, oh yeah, we know, but we want another one from nice. you. So it is showing me that my expertise and my skills, it is working. Nice. I give you a little synopsis. Give it to us. Let's say man and a woman. Mm -hmm. We're having a great time, but I'm working so hard. She's mad. Now I get home. She ain't talking to me. Right. Mm -hmm. But baby, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. How do you get it? You got to find a way to put, win her heart back. Put on one of your tracks? Definitely. Ah. All you got to do is put a Lee Kelly on and she'll come back right over. Okay, okay. You ain't got to worry about it. Give me a snippet. One of my, one of, one of my main tracks uh -huh. for relationships is called One More Chance. Okay. Everybody needs a second chance. Really? Trust me. I don't know about that. Because not all the time the first mistake is deliberate. Sometimes it's just a mistake. Okay. But if it keeps recurring, now this is a problem. Okay. So we always choose to give one, one more chance. Okay. If you should walk with me to the park so we can talk, yeah, about the things I've done and you forgiving me for everything wrong, whoa. What took me so long, what took me so long to know How you felt about this love, baby What took me so long just to find out I've been doing you wrong You need to check out that copy. Mm. You can find that copy anytime you want. You mm -hmm. just check it out on Spotify, check it out on CD Baby. Mm -hmm. Or as a matter of fact, you could just hit up the Poorman Production, mm -hmm. yes, at gmail.com, and we'll let you know. So why does it always have to take people so long, though? That's my point. You see, it took me so long, you know, I, I couldn't understand. So I had to use that line to reiterate to the man, don't be wasting time and taking too long. She mm -hmm. just might run away. And that's, I think that, I think, I think a lot of Caribbean men, I know I'm going to get emails, out of care. <laughs> I think they read the same book as far as longevity is concerned and not longevity in the sense of, okay, we're going to stick and stay in this relationship, stick and stay again, but longevity as far as I am going to see how long he or she can endure this pain and then I'm going to bless her with a ring after I know that she's gone, you know, through all of this turmoil with me and then I know she's the one. Why is that the narrative that we utilize in, in our culture? Guilt. Ah. Well, you know you're guilty of something and it rests on your conscience, you're gonna to try to fix that. Mm. Especially if it means a lot to you, you're gonna fix it. Mm. Definitely gonna fix it. Mm. Nobody wants to be in a situation where, okay, B used to be my girl, but I messed up. How can I win her back? She wouldn't even talk to me. She's not answering my phone calls. How about sending her some roses? Mm. How about sending her a ticket to lunch? Take her to lunch. How about taking her to the masseuse parlor? Time. 
give her a little bit of that. Mm. And she'll melt away and say, you know, he really hurt my heart, but I really appreciate him. Now that's a different game. Mm. Now when you get your foot back in, make sure you don't make those mistakes again. So you end up in the doghouse. That's a whole other <laughs> topic, Sanks to Sink. We'll be right back. We're getting jewels right now. The jewels, Sanks to Sink TV. Stick and stay. Don't move. <laughs> Thanks to Saint TV, we're back with Lee Kelly, and he is dropping jewels, okay? It's up to you on whether you want to catch it. It's for the ladies and the men. Oh, definitely. Because obviously, women, we play our part, too. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, Can't be yeah. done. One and two makes, right. makes a team. Right, but I think more men need to have more accountability. Uh, accountability, yes. But yeah. then again, you got to understand from some chaps, like I said, broken homes, they're going to try to win their heart first. Mm. It's not like before where, you know, men would be, but then again, it also has to do with the ladies. You know, not every woman is a lady nowadays. Mm. You know, so that's also a big difference. Speak, speak. You know. Yeah. And then with the media, hello, Facebook. <laughs> hello, Instagram. Yeah. The more time you spend on the media, you're actually taking time away from her. That's true. So if you're not doing things together, then the relationship gets rocky. Right. So what do you do? You try to give them encouragement by making songs that make them happy. In and and I love it. I love the songs. I'm I'm old school in a sense where I love the R and B old school. Oh, yeah. I love I even like jazz. I, I love old school reggae. Um, so I think it definitely depends on the person. And I think that's one of the major keys that we fail to realize too is the communication. Communication. And oftentimes intimacy, we feel like in intimacy is only in the bedroom. No, and intimacy be starts way before you get long there, before long before that. So I think that's another thing, too, another issue. It's, it's the communication, the levels of communication that we have in our household. And I guess it starts from the very beginning. Oh, I guess, yeah. yeah. If you can remember how you liked the person in the beginning, what makes you wanted that person in the beginning, if you can get back to that very first flame mm -hmm. and you re recite that flame again, mm -hmm. oh, you'll be fine. So you're speaking all this knowledge. So, oh, yeah. so what's your love life looking like? Oh, my love life is wonderful. Nice. Oh, yeah. I have love like it. about 15,000 people that loves me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all heading to the depot to go and get my CD right nice. about Nice. <laughs> plug, that plug. I know. That I know for sure. And nice. a matter of fact, they might be wondering, when's the next show, Mr. Kelly? Yes, when wait. is it? Ah. Uh, I'll have to wait until the management lets me know. Okay, okay, management. You guys need to put him on stage because he has how many? Over how many people loving oh, 15, you? 15,000 and counting. And counting right and counting. So as far as your personal love life is concerned, since you danced around that, how is that going? Oh, my personal love life is, is gorgeous. That's nice. It's wonderful. So do you utilize the things that you share out oh, to yeah, the public? Oh, everything, yeah, everything that I've, I've, I've done to you right now is what I practice. Nice. So were you once one of those people that had to transition into who you are right now as far as? Uh, unfortunately, no. Nice. So you got it right the very beginning? From day one. What? That's what you call old school rules. That's what's up. Never change. That's what's up. You see, like I said before, if it's not a broken home, there are certain rules that your parents are going to grow you with, and That's they're going to stick with you. That's true. Hence the saying, train the child when he's young because right. he'll never depart from the good ways when right. he gets old. Right. Pretty much the same. So if you could practice that, by the time you get to 30, you don't need your parents. You're you thinking about foundation. making your own life now and teaching your own kids the same thing, they, the same values they pass on That's to true. you. That's true. So, it's true. So what, so what do you say about the households that do have that two-parent home and, you know, 
it's still it's a two parent home, but it's just it's just for you know societal purposes. You have a lot of people that are living lives. Yeah, but so how again, does that affect? Okay, in a situation where a couple lives together and they're living lie, that's on them. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. most men is not going to tell you that he would love to have three women in a bed. Of course not. He'll never tell you that. Right. But if he loves this person, mm -hmm. but he doesn't mind chasing that one, he's not going to let her know. Right. Because he don't want to hurt her heart. Mm. But the thing is, if you were satisfied with this person, you, you would have to chase in the first person. place. So some people just want to get their royal oats sewed. Woo! <laughs> On that note, where can we contact you for more information? Well, you can find me, Lee Kelly. You could send me an email at dleekelly3 at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on Instagram. You already know my peeps. You can hit me up on Facebook as the artist Lee Kelly. You can check out my page and see what's going on, what I'm down with. The last uh, couple of events that we did uh, last Sunday at the Jerk Festival, I had the privilege of uh, stepping in for uh, the lead singer for Mighty Diamonds. Mm. I represented for him. And uh, a few weeks ago, we did the VP Record Showcase. Shout out to all my people on the social media. Y'all made that run 20. Nice. And I loved you for that. But in the meantime, like I said, this TV station right here, five so five, <laughs> yeah, this is where it's at. I'm telling you. And this lady right here, D. B. B. The bomb diggity. Thank you. Thank this is my you. lady right here. Yep. Thank you. 15,000 and counting. <laughs> 15,000. Thank and you counting. so much for spending time with us, Lee Kelly, and really opening up and being authentic with us. I feel the love. I appreciate you so much. You guys, be sure to check him out. He's on Spotify. And check him out on all social media outlets. Thanks for Sync TV. We will be back. Definitely. to sink. Music is life. Yeah, yeah. Move it, move it. Voice to the man just on reaching out to the world. Um, take one out family we are here with double dot boy new what's going on it's good thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come and sit and chat with us today we're gonna go right into your music so you've been doing this for how long now about um 10 years whoa yeah. you look so young yeah i'm 28 though oh okay 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 yeah. okay so give me a little bit about your background you're from the islands but you were raised born you were raised in miami though yeah, right i was born and raised in miami born and raised in miami and um how what got you into the music industry in the, to begin with i mean i just fell in love with it from a kid like around age 12. okay and ever since i've been running with it okay and you write your own lyrics and everything yeah so what inspires you to write your, those lyrics i mean like i grew up listening to like lil wayne ah 50 cent yeah mm. so lil wayne 50 cents they basically you know said okay you're gonna take whatever it is that you're learning from them gather from them and then you took off with like that yeah so how difficult was it for you to just branch off into music i know it's not easy i mean it wasn't difficult because it was something like i felt that was always a part of me since a, nice. a kid ah. so i just basically basically it basically dropped my passion is what drives me ah yeah. so your passion is definitely music no looking back no looking for second careers or other opportunities, I mean, just if, straight music. If, if it comes, I'll, I'll flow with it. Music. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, if you could choose a track that you can sample with someone and, you know, put it out there into the public, who would it be? A track? Mm-hmm. Mm, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Yeah, Lil Wayne. So, he's definitely the person that you look up to. Yeah. I, Kendrick Lamar, so. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's my favorite rapper. All right, so let's talk about your specific tracks. So, the song that I heard was very positive. And in the days that we're living in right now, 
you don't find too much positivity going on. And I guess mainstream music is very difficult for mainstream music to be positive. For some reason, there has to be some sort of, I don't know, drama involved in it, mm -hmm. some sort of violence in order for it to make it to mainstream media. So typically the people who, you know, make it out in the main, on the mainstream, they typically have music that, you know, I guess it's gonna sell. And then underground people, yeah. they're the social, more social conscious people, uh -huh. the people who, you know, thinks about our future and the people who are actually listening to it. So what made you say, okay, this is the route that I'm gonna take with my music? I mean, basically I, it came a point in my life where I guess my heart led me, led me to write that type of music and, mm. and I feel like it's just what takes you is what what's true. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if it's true, it's you, you know what I mean? And it's authentic and you can and, feel yeah, it it's, like it's, it's it's original. Right. You know what I mean? Ah. So yeah. the track that I heard, it was basically about staying in your own lane. So yeah, to basically speak. staying focused, staying determined and and, and just staying focused on what you want to do and what you want to achieve is there someone that keeps you motivated to stay focused and, i mean my and, family ah my mom your mom yeah what about your mom makes you say you know what i'm sticking to this i'm staying focused regardless of the path that this you know may take me i am still going to veer back and go towards music i mean i just use her life as a as a as a um how could motivation. You call yeah, motivation. Yeah, I just use her life because I seen her and all her problems, the things that she went through, is what caused me to kind of like stay strong and stay grounded. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You talk about Lil Wayne a lot. You say that's the guy you're looking up to. Mm -hmm. So as far as Lil Wayne's path is concerned, we know that he is musically brilliant. He is very much so in a lot of areas untouchable. However, there were some deals that he went through that made him realize that sometimes the person or the people that you think are on your side sometimes they are not you know they don't have your best interests mm -hmm. at heart so what have you learned from his journey i learned that no matter um no matter what comes your way like you just have to stay true to you you know what i mean like i watched him go through all type of trials and tribulations but i never seen him i never seen him let like what what he went through change the way that he create and who he create for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? And it's and it's awesome to see that he's still, you know, making music, even though we don't see it, exactly. you know, in the forefront, but behind the scene, he has a lot going on, right? Yeah, he, he didn't let like the um, the new age music dis disturb like his his work ethic. Right, I mean, right. He stayed true to his craft. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks to Sank family. Stick and stay. We will be right back. Thanks to Sink family. We are back with Double Dark Boy New. It's good. So I want to know where you get the name from. I mean, you are you have chocolate skin. I see the chocolate skin. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's from that. Yeah. All right. So explain to us what what dark, Double Dark I mean, Boy. Dark, new. dark Boy came from the complexion of my skin. Okay. And Double New came from a childhood name that was given to me by my my siblings. So they called you Nunu. Yeah. Why? Because you're the new sibling. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty and it's much stuck with that. You? Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> you, you know, don't overthink things. Don't overthink things. Sometimes it's just right down your face. Simple, right? There you go. <laughs> so, but you don't want appreciate people calling you Nunu. Nah. So you had to, you know, thug it out a little bit more and say double uh, dot boy Nunu. There you go. Gotcha. Gotcha. They call you Didi? 
Nah. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Double dog. All right. All right, so as far as production is concerned, so a lot of people say they want to be a, 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 a rapper. A lot of people say that's what they want to go into. They want to be a rapper. What makes... What, what, what is it that makes you say, okay, I'm going to make it? What makes you say, okay, I'm going to have tunnel vision and I'm going to make it versus everybody else? They're taking that same route. Why is it that you didn't say, okay, let me go get a nine to five? Because I know that's, that, that is consistent money coming in. Why is it that you said, all right, let me fall back on something else? Um, truly because it's basically what, what, what drives me. Like, my focus is what I don't let, like, what other people choices and what they think of me dictates what I want for myself. Mm. You know what I mean? So that'll never define who I am with what the outside world thinks. Love it. So it sounds like you're pretty motivated. What is your regimen? Like, okay, so you do, you wake up and you say, all right, today I'm going to write bars. Today I'm going to do this. Like, you know, what is it that you do to say, all right, let me keep, let me keep on this track because I mean, uh, industry period, any field in entertainment, it takes a lot of grit. So do you have a specific regimen where you say, okay, I'm going to wake up. These are my goals for today. Or do you, are you the type of person you just go with the flow? Yeah, I just basically go with the flow and let mm. my heart send me into whatever direction it, mm. it, it does. So what's your outlook in the next three years? My outlook is, is everything that, that stands for me today. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like the future is today. So I never like really say what future holds because mm. I'm making the future right now okay all right got it got it so how does this interfere in your personal life I mean I can't say it's an interference because like you you, you live two lives like once you're an artist you have an artist life and you have like a, a family life you know right I mean? you got to make time for your family right you got to also make time for what you love to do mm. but you can't let what you love to do overshadow what needs to be loved you know what mm -hmm. i mean so you have a you feel like you have a consistent balance yeah balance ha. basically a balance are you a person that you you pretty much have a close tight-knit um you know support base or is it just all right you have a big team of people you have an entourage that's supporting you i mean i am my entourage and mm. I, I am who i am my support so you know i never like really focus on who supports me and who wants to support me because that fades it does. People comes and goes, you know what I mean? So it's basically it's you that, that keep that consistency, consistency flowing for yourself. Got it. So your dad is from St. Lucia. Yeah. So your dad, I'm pretty sure island man, island things, they teach you some things that, not to say other cultures don't, but it's something about, you know, that harsh um, upbringing from the island that, I don't know, the way they deliver it. I don't know if it's in their delivery. Of course, the way they've experienced it for some reason, it's a little different from other cultures. I'm sure mm -hmm. other cultures can say the same. So what is one thing that he's instilled in you that you feel like you're going to permeate, you know, to the universe? I mean, he always embedded in me that um, people don't make you. People um, don't allow people to dictate who you are, like, mm -hmm. and where you're going to go. Just stand for yourself and stand what you stand for what you love. Love it, love it. I love that. In your spare time, what you what, what are you rocking with? What are you listening to besides Lil Wayne? I mean, I listen to all, all, all type of music. I listen to a lot of gospel. You listen to gospel? Yeah, I listen to gospel I as well. hear I hear it in your track. Like, the way yeah, you that's, lay. Yeah, that's what kind of, like, led me. It's kind of like a spiritual, inspirational track if you really yep. listen to it. Because that's the way I was brought up in my childhood led me to kind of like right from that perspective mm. you know what I mean so it's, it's all true if you listen to the song it's me it's, mm. it's nothing I could have made up so you attend the church regularly not like I used to but I, I'm i going to start back oh yeah oh we're going to talk about that when we get back Thanks for Sanks TV we'll be back we're on a spiritual journey with Double Dark Boy New there you go Sync. Music is life. Yeah, yeah. Move it, move it. Voice to
We're back, Sex and Sang TV. We are back with Double Dark Boy New. Double Dark Boy New. Double Dark Boy New. You have like a real chill, mellow, laid back vibe. That's me. That's you. What about when you hit the um studio? Is it still the same? I mean, when I hit the studio, that's not me. You know what I mean? That's uh -huh. Double Dark Boy New. Ah, mm -hmm. so. Oh, so you have the alter ego thing going. There you go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see a lot of people do that. A lot of people say they have alter ego, and then they switch it on, they switch it off when necessary. So you have you performed in front of an audience before? I mean, a couple of times. How did, how was that? I mean, kind of like, how, how the way I feel right now. Really? Yeah. How do you feel now? You like nervous? a little nervous. But I see it, I, I mean, see it. But you're doing good. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. So as far as this inspirational, motivational journey, the spiritual journey that you're taking, you said that you used to attend church a lot. Yeah. And what made you kind of not attend, in, you I know, mean, as often? Honestly, like, it's just like, as you as you grow older, you kind of like, kind of lean to, I won't say lean to your own understanding, but you kind of venture off to what you feel is right for yourself. Got you. Know you. I mean? When I was growing up as a kid, I always was so driven by my mom and dad that I didn't really know like what was for me. Got you. Know you. What I mean? so, but now that I went through what I went through in my life, it's kind of like the truth leads you back to the truth. You know what I mean? Ah, yeah. I, know, I know mom's proud of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, so was it something traumatic that occurred that caused you, that called you back that's calling you back home to church? No, I won't say it's not traumatic. It's just like when once God got a hold on you, he have a hold on you. Mm. you know I mean? So like, there's no way you can avoid it. There's no way you can try to block out that still voice. You know? mm. yeah. So I'm pretty sure you still, you know, walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So the only aspect that's changed. Well, let me not speak for you. Let me not speak for you. So what do you feel has changed in the course of your spiritual journey that well, causes you? Yeah. I mean, what has changed is the fact that I kind of like grew into a person that that knows what the truth is, mm. in 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 a sense of like who I used to be. Like you know, when you when you once you once you haven't fully matured in life, mm -hmm. you really can't understand certain things it's until true. you fully mature. It's so, true. I don't know a better way to explain it, but. I, I think I got an idea of what I'm saying. <laughs> so in other words, you were basically, you had this foundation set for you where, okay, your parents instilled in you, okay, this is the way, this is the way, right? So then you go to church, you follow, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, True. the Bible, you follow the doctrine, and then going through experiences and maturing, you're able to basically find within yourself and the spiritual of God, you know, you find out that, all right, this is this is the this is the path that I'm taking. This is the path that he's leading me to and not so yeah. much and not so much lean on someone else teaching and knowledge of exactly. it. Exactly. Because you found in research on your own and based on your experiences you're able to find that that journey. Somewhat like that? True. Something like that. Okay. So spiritually then, who do you listen to spiritually or do you even listen to? I mean, I listen to um basically Christianity. Mm. That's, that's what I listen to. That's what I grew up on. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if you could give advice to someone up and coming in the industry and they are torn between whether they should get that nine to five or if they should continue with this journey, this music journey, what would you tell them? I would tell them straight up, like, just follow your heart. Like, because your heart is going to lead you until where you need to be. Just like you know that. I mean? Like, nothing else, nothing more. Just like that. In addition to that, there's a lot of people, local artists, that has made it from, you know, Florida. And are there any one of those artists that you say you look up to and say, okay, if he or she could do it, I can do it too? I mean, I really won't say if, if they can do it because it, it'll lead me into comparison. Ah. And you already know comparison is the greatest thief of joy. So mm. it's like, it's basically, it's people that I, 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 I listen to and I say, okay, this person really grinded his way up to the top, like Kodak and mm -hmm. people like that. Mm -hmm. That really worked for it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I want to say that if they you can make it, I could. Got you. I'll be comparing myself to them. Got you, got you. you. Know I mean? It's different. Yeah. I'll I, I take that. i take that. All right. If we could contact you for more information, where could we contact you for more information, up and coming events, et cetera? Um, you could contact me on Twitter, um, Instagram at Double Dark Boy New. That's about it. And up and coming events? Not right now. I'm just basically um, Focus on. focused on creating more. Got you, got you. Yeah. Well, Double Dark Boy New is nice having you. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. We'll be back in just a few. 
sink to sink. Music is life. Yeah, yeah. Move it, move it. Voice to the man just on reaching out to the world. Um, take banana. Thanks to Sync TV. We've reached the final segment of our show. We want to thank you so much for joining us here. We were here with Double Doc Boy New. New. Yes, New New. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> as well as Lee Kelly. You guys, I want to thank you so much. If you want more information about Sync to Sync TV, please feel free to log on to www.sinkstosinktv.com. You can also hit us up on Instagram at Sync to Sync TV. I am your host, B. You can hit me up at B Longchamp and check out Karu of Fort Lauderdale at Karu Multiplex on Instagram. Till next time, thanks for saying, keep safe. We love you and happy holidays. <laughs>